turn your turn your microphones on. Good evening and welcome to the July 1st, 1st, 2014 regular meeting of the City of Temple City City Council. Uh, we have the roll call, please. Council Member Sternquist. Present. Council Member Vizcara. Here. Council Member Yu. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Chavez. Here. Mayor Bloom. Here. For tonight's invocation, we have Lynn Best, the head deacon of the Westminster Presbyterian Church, located at 9642 East Live Oak Avenue. Uh, Lynn has been a member of the church since 1973 and ordained as deacon in 1974, then ordained as the elder in 2002. She currently serves as the head deacon. Lynn, all rise, please. Dear God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather and work on those things that will enrich our, and protect our city. We are especially grateful for those people who give their time and their particular gifts, who stay late and who spend hours in preparation of ways to make Temple City a place of excellence. We ask you to bless the mayor, the entire city council, the various commissions and committees, and the support staff in their endeavors. As we reflect back on Memorial Day and prepare for our Independence Day, let us not forget the freedoms which have come to us at such a high price. Help us to continue to cherish the dream of a nation where all are seen as equal and endowed by their creator with inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We thank you for the diversity of personalities and talents that have been brought to this council meeting this evening. Grant them everything they need to establish Temple City as a wholesome and happy place in which to live and work. This we ask in your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lynn. I have now asked the uh, Sister Cities contingent who will be leaving shortly to go to Australia if they could lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Item five on the agenda is ceremonial matters. We have several. First one is pet of the month. Uh, Cindy Rigney of the San Gabriel Valley Humane Society Board, she's the board president, will be presenting Stephen, pet of the month. Uh, formal introduction as well. This is my fellow board member, Dick Yost. <laughs> Hi, Dick. He's a big dog handler, and I'm a small dog person. Normally, we would alternate big, little, but um, I went to a Temple City Chamber meeting this summer and ran into Councilman Chavez and his wife and heard that they love German Shepherds. So there's a little bit of a story with Stephen. One of our animal control officers went out on call for a dog hit by a car. He was so severely injured he couldn't move. She managed to pick him up and she was concerned. Powerful dog, he could easily nip, bite. He did no such thing. He just laid in her arms, let her pick him up, put him in the truck, took him to the vet, got a severe pain medication, and honestly, we had a big debate. Was it humane to keep him, or what should we do? We couldn't resist. We kept him. It's been a little over two months of cage rest. He lost his tail, oh. but he's in great shape about three years old and ready for a wonderful home. He loves to walk, he loves to play, tug of war is one of his favorite games. And there was an episode on the way over where he got tangled up with his um, seat belt. He panicked, Dick panicked, but they managed to pull out of it just fine and again. The poor guy, he just, he sits there and he looks at you like, please help. Please save me. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Anyone interested in adopting Stephen? Uh, you can contact the San Gabriel Valley <laughs> Humane <laughs> Society. Yeah. How old Don't is let my wife I, see it. I didn't tell Jane tonight <laughs> that. Yeah. She'll hear. She'll hear about it. I'm sure. I'm sure she will. Yes. Thank you need another beautiful okay. dog. You need another dog. Cindy, actually, actually, Kona is about a little over three years old, also. So. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, male, female. I don't know. She needs some uh, company. Uh, <laughs> that may work out. <laughs> Nice job. Um, and real quickly, uh, as we're starting our 90th year of celebrations, I just would like to invite everyone to please visit our newly designed website at www.sgbhumane.org. And please save the date. Invitations will be coming out soon for our August 2nd uh, 90th gala at the um, Temple at Community Companion Animal Hospital here in Temple City. And then September 27th, please save the date for our community open house, 90th celebration, which will be at the shelter. And if all goes well, we'll close down the street and uh, have a little block party over there. Okay, cool. okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank very, you very much. much. Okay, item B, 5B is the presentation of the introduction of the Temple City students going to Australia. You already were, had them lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I'd like to ask Nancy Terry and Leanne Beraldi to uh, introduce him, and we have some certificates, and we'll take a, a photo with him and wish him, wish him well. Thank you so much, Mayor Bloom. It really gives us great pleasure to bring the kids here. They are top-notch kids, very active in the school and the community, and we'll actually let them introduce themselves and just tell you one thing that they're hoping to see or do when they get to Australia. And don't forget, 2015, we will be sending an, an adult group over, so keep your eye on the newspaper or the chamber papers, and we'll be announcing a meeting about that. Hello, my name is Sarah Thomason. I am really looking forward to the, all the food over there, including Vegemite, which Ooh. I'm not sure if I will like, but I'm very excited to try that. And stuff. also, I would just like to give a really big thank you to all of you for making this possible, because it means a lot that I, I really get to go to Australia. So thank you. Okay. Hi, my name is Shivani Shah. Um, I'm super duper excited to see the schools in Australia, because um, I'm actually excited to try wearing uniforms. I know that's something we don't get here, but um, I'd really like to thank um, Mayor Bloom and all the council members for making this opportunity possible for the six of us. It means a lot, and I'm really excited. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amber Allred. Um, I'm very excited about getting to live on a ranch for a month with like seven horses, and it's gonna be fun. And um, I would also like to say thank you to the council members. We really appreciate all the hard work you do, including sending us to Australia for a month. So thank you. Hi, my name is Bailey Wise. And the thing that I'm most looking forward to is being able to meet a kangaroo and a koala. And they're not bears, they're actually marsupials. And I just wanted to thank all of you guys for supporting us and just helping us and making such a wonderful experience possible. Uh, hello, my name is Sandra Ngo, and I am looking, really looking forward to meeting my family because, uh, fun fact, I found out that everybody, including um, my host sisters, 12-year-old brother, they're all over six feet tall, so that'll be kind of interesting. <laughs> and again, I also want to thank everybody for supporting us because not every city has this opportunity, and we're really lucky to be able to go on this adventure and have fun. Thank you. We really are sending a six-person, one boy. Yeah, right here. Five girls. Yeah, Nathan Wong, yes. But his family thought it was important to take a family vacation before he left. So that's why he's not here with us tonight. Okay. Uh, we'd like to present some certificates to you. Then we'll take a group, uh, group photo. I'll take one. You want to be able to test that? Yeah. Well, they're moving up to the podium. Uh, the certificate says, presented on behalf of the citizens of Temple City in recognition of your participation in the Temple City Hawkesbury Student Exchange Program. We commend you for helping expand the mission of Sister Cities programs throughout the world to promote peace through mutual respect, understanding, and cooperation, one individual, one community at a time. Yeah. 
While I was talking to the girls before the meeting, they were practicing their accent. And uh, I'm sure when they get back here, we're not going to be able to understand them. They're getting pretty good at it already. Okay, item 5C is another ceremonial matter. There's a, a mosaic photo collage. And I'd like to introduce Grace Young, a Temple City teen and adult service librarian, to uh, share with City Council the library's mosaic photo collage. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you, everyone, for having us here today. My yeah, name can, is. Can you Grace. speak into the microphone a little bit louder, please? There you go. Thank you, everyone, for having us here today. My name is Grace Yan, the teen adult librarian at the Temple City Library. So, um, in March, there is a National Teen Tech Week, and the theme for this year is DIY at your library. So the teen advisory board members at the library, they came up with an idea of do a DIY photo collage. So we asked the teens to come to the library to take the pictures, use their cell phones or cameras. And we take the pictures of their favorite spots in the library with different angles and the distance. After they take the picture, they send the picture to me and I put them together and send them to the instructional resource specialist, Margo Butera, the, at the Temple City High School. Then we asked the high school students from the photograph class using the new technology and the software available in the computers in the classroom. They put all the hundreds of pictures together and made this, created this beautiful project, the Mosaic Photo Collage. And we have the posters here. And may I introduce all the team advisory board members for help us with the library programs. Okay, what I'd like to do is ask the council members to go up there and we will add one more photo. Maybe they can Photoshop it in somehow. <laughs> Did you want to introduce them? Yeah. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and introduce them? The first student is uh, Holly Hall. The second one is uh, Christy Wall, Kai Wall, William Liu, Stephen Cole. So council members, may I do a quick announcement of library programs? Yes, please. Okay. Um, from the library July calendar, you can see we are having the summer reading programs in the library for everyone, for babies, children, teens, and adults. Everyone, you read the books, you get a prize, and you have a chance to win the Kindle file. In addition to our regular story time on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, we have programs for teens and adults as well. Like um, next week on July 10th, we're having root beer tasting. We invite teens and adults come to the library and blind taste the different brands of root beer and help us find the ones that will hit the spot. 
we also have movie night for all families on that day too. And if you grow extra vegetables and the fruits in your garden and you like to share the food with others in the community, we have the Neighborhood Produce Exchange Program every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. So uh, that's, uh, we can see, you can uh, see all the programs on the library calendar and on the library website. Thank you, Council. Okay, thank you, Grace. We now move to item six on the agenda, which is public comments on items not listed on the agenda. The City Council will now hear public comments regarding items not listed on the agenda. The procedure to address the City Council is highlighted on the first page of this agenda. Is there anyone who would care to speak? Mary. Mary Kokeiko, Temple City resident. Um, this is something that I just noticed uh, yesterday on my block, Camellia Avenue, north of Garibaldi. The signs that were put up there for the, uh, uh, the sweeping of the streets. Okay, I haven't noticed those signs up till I walked down there today. Uh, you can't, uh, the way they're placed, they're too far in. Okay, now on the signs, on my side, it says Friday from 6 to 11. But it doesn't say if it's, when you read it, like it's every Friday, it doesn't say every other Friday. Right now they come uh, every other Friday. So when you look at the sign, it looks like it's every Friday. And then on the other side, on the other side, it's got Friday, the same thing. But the two houses on the corner, their address is on Garibaldi. So where the signs start, it looks like you can park there. So there's the confusion because there's that first lot on both sides. So where the signs start, it looks like it's from there forward up, but not those two blocks. So people would figure they can park there, but technically no. So I think you have to kind of check some of these signs. And then uh, also, the every looks like it's every Friday. A lot of people on my block, I brought it to their, they say, no, it says every Friday. I says, no, it's every other Friday. So I don't know if it's being changed or what's happening, but there's a lot of confusion. I'm sure it's, especially if it's on the corner. Those signs are placed like the next house up. So that's what, you're either going to have to put the signs further down toward Garibaldi, and I had to go there and read it in person today because when you go by, I never noticed it when we're going home in a car, somebody's in a car, never noticed those signs. So uh, that's it. Okay, but thank I think you. you have to recheck and then make, maybe Athens could put, when they send the bills out, Maybe they can put something in there when they send you your bill about what's going on with the street sweeping. Yeah, normally we don't uh, comment on items uh, on po under public comment, but the street, street sweeping program will be every week and we will have staff uh, relook at the uh, location of the signs. Okay, is there anyone else who would care to speak at this time? Okay, if not, I will close the uh, public comments. We'll move to item seven on the agenda, the consent calendar. All consent calendar items may be approved in a single motion as recommended, less removed for further discussion. Mayor Bloom, before you uh, take any action on those items, I'd just like to um, recuse myself from items M due to a potential conflict of interest. I don't know if that's, uh, certainly I will recuse myself from any voting on that. And if there is any discussion or bed item is pulled, then I will leave the, uh, leave the dais for that discussion. Okay. Does anyone one care to pull that? Uh, okay. Okay. Mayor, in light of that, we should pull that item from the consent calendar okay. and take it as a separate item afterwards, just so Mr. Chavez can uh, recuse himself. Okay. Item M has been pulled. Uh, are there any others? 
Okay, if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the remainder of the consent calendar. Motion to approve. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Anyone opposed? No one's opposed. It's uh, unanimously approved. We will now go to item M. If you'd care to recuse yourself, we will address item M. Yeah, without, with, without restating my recusal, I'll just stand on what I said before. Okay. Okay, we will. Do you want to, shall I leave, Eric? Or? Okay. Shall I stay by the door? You <laughs> might want to knock. Yeah, don't, don't, don't go get a sandwich and a cup of coffee. Eh? Okay, I will entertain a motion for the approval of item M. Move it. It's been moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any opposition? Okay, the item has been uh, unanimously approved with one re recusal. Okay, only, we only in government and the law. <laughs> Okay, we now go to item eight, public hearings. We have none this evening. Uh, item nine is unfinished business. Uh, number 9A is the appointment of members of the General Plan Advisory Committee. A presentation by Jeffrey Stearns, I believe, our planning manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, when this last came before you, you asked for more information uh, from the people recommended for the, the GPAC. Uh, we got information uh, from 11 of the 12 people. The 11th uh, should be on the dais. We got it late last night. And so I'm just here to answer any questions. Okay, okay anybody have any questions on this item? Uh, just, I have a question just based on what we were talking about last time is, how, how did this list get put together? And I mean, I guess my simple question is why these 12? I, and do, I tried to do some research because it, it, this whole th process was started by our former community development director. Um, and I know he started with uh, the Citizens Academy. He, um, he was looking to bring in people who hadn't been on commissions before, but were interested in, in serving the city and, and helping plan uh, you know, the future. And so he started this when uh, planning and com community development did their um, night of the uh, Citizens Academy and based off people coming up to him that night who were interested and in what else could they do that's where the list got started I don't know exactly where every single name came from but I know that's what kicked off the process um, he specifically was trying to, to get new people and not people who had been on other commissions uh, or were currently serving on commissions uh, so that this panel was was independent and that it, if the GPAC needs to consult with Planning Commission or Public Safety and Transportation, they can do so, and we don't have that uh, uh, mixing of, of committee members. And um, I'm assuming that everyone's been contacted and they've all agreed to serve? Yes, before we first brought the list to you, I, Mark had contacted everybody and then I followed up uh, after he left the city to be sure that everyone on the list was still interested. And then you guys added the, uh, the last, th I think, three or four names. Now, I don't know this individual, but I keep hearing his name mentioned as a possible candidate for city council, William Mann. Um, how, what effect, let's say, if Mr. Mann decides to run for city council in the next election and win, will that have on him serving on this, uh, this uh, committee? From my perspective, I don't know from a legal perspective, but from a practical standpoint, he'd need to resign from the GPAC because he would ultimately, as a council member, be the one approving the general plan. Hey, Mayor and council members, if this uh, individual was elected to the council, they would have to resign their seat on the GPAC uh, unless appointed as an ad hoc member by the council. Um, but simply filing and running for um, a position on the council wouldn't require that they resign or automatically pull them off. Yeah, and I don't mean to just single out this person, but I just, that's just the name that comes to mind. I haven't heard anything on any of these other individuals, so I just thought I'd bring up, you know, if that has going to have an impact or not. So, so um, obviously, uh, commissioners and other, otherwise, people can, can run for election. They don't have to resign their post. So, same thing with Bob. Sure. All right. Pleasure. Okay, are there any other questions from the council? 
Okay, I'll open it for public comments. Anyone from the audience uh, care to comment on this? Okay, there being none, I will close public comments. Uh, council comments. Fernando? No. Vince? No, I, we read through most of the information, I believe. Okay. Yeah, they're well, a well balanced group of folks. Okay. So. Cindy? Um, no, I just think it's um, exciting to have people who haven't been involved in our community at any point step forward now and, you know, serve as a starting point on, um, you know, a committee such as this. And have fresh eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tom? Um, yeah, I echo the same sentiments. Uh, we've been talking about this for a number of years now to try to get new people involved. That was one of the goals of the <coughs> Citizens Academy, and it looks like we've accomplished at least that, partly yeah. through that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's good to see uh, a lot of these names. Uh, I, I know many of them personally, and I know that they've been um, wanting to get involved uh, uh, you know, a little more than they have before, and so that's good. And then the others who haven't got as involved now is their chance. And uh, I think I always thought that the more people we can get involved and the more people we look at these things, the better off we can be as a community. So good, good stuff. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Okay, Mayor, I will make a motion that we, uh, where are we? Not, not, oh, here we go. Yeah. That we appoint uh, the members as stated on the uh, attachment A to serve on the general plan advisory committee. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any objection? Uh, if not, the items uh, unanimously approved. And just for just for the public's information, would you like to read the names of the uh, the people that have been put onto this? <laughs> Uh, the the 12, 12 members would be Jennifer Pedraza, Leo Asinas, uh, Lucy Liao, Oscar Bustamante, Tim Huang, uh, William Mann, Helen Chen Marston, Pete Santucci, Beverly Guan, Betty Kwan, Guy DeMarco, and Cindy Vance. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I was wondering if... Um, uh, Mr. Starnes, our plan manager or um, our community development director, might m briefly mention what's going to happen, what would this GPAC folks would do so that the uh, audience can, the community can hear what. Uh, the, the general plan advisory committee is really going to be giving direction to staff and our consultants as we go through the update process uh, to have a new general plan. Um, as issues come up, uh, they'll give us direction. Uh, if there's alternatives, which way to proceed, um, really help uh, facilitate with the public to identify what the issues are in our city um, so that we really have a general plan that uh, really relates to the city and where we want to see it go for the next 25 years. Um, they will ultimately make a recommendation then to the Planning Commission on the general plan and updated development code as well as the environmental uh, review for it. This would be a that? couple years effort, right? Probably their portion will probably be about 18 months uh, to to two years, depending on the schedule. Um, for the most part, when the general plan's done, they'll be done. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, just in wrapping up, uh, Jeffrey and his family are moving to Colorado. His last day will be this Friday. So we thank day. thank you. Thursday? 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 Okay. We're uh, making him come in on July 5th, 4th, though. So. Yeah, 5th, oh. 5th uh, as well. Yeah, all right. Anyhow, thank you for your service to the city, and, and good luck to you in Colorado. Okay, item 10 on the agenda is new business. Uh, item A is a consideration of a rate adjustment request for waste services from Athens Services, Inc. Public Safety and Service... Manager Robert Sahagan. Good evening, Mayor Blum, City Council. Before you tonight is item 10A on the agenda, which is for you to consider and approve a rate adjustment request for waste services from Athens Services for fiscal year 1415, based on two of two components, which are collection and transportation, and the other component, which is process of their agreement with the city. I'll give you a brief background. On February, February 18, 2003, the City Council approved an amended and restated agreement with Athens Services 
which is the city's contract waste collector. On June 18th, 2013, the City Council considered and approved the adjusted waste collection rates made by Athens Services to become effective July 1st, 2013, which among all other rates, most notably, took single family rates to $29.99. On May 30th of this year, the City was notified by Athens Services that they have adjusted the rates for waste services to be effective July 1st today which is pursuant to Section 8.2 of the aforementioned amended agreement with the City. Accordingly, Athens is requesting a rate adjustment of 1.42% increase over last year's rate. The Athens rate is broken down into four components, the first component being collection and transportation, the second being process, the third being green waste disposal, and the fourth being rubbish disposal. These four components add up to what is called the net rate or the, por or the portion that goes to Athens. It should be noted that the single family residential rate is the only service category that includes component number three, green waste disposal, so that since only single family residences separate their waste between green waste and everything else. Components one and two are adjusted every July 1st based on CPA change based on the CPI change from April to April, which in this case is 1.42 percent. Component number three is adjusted by the percentage change in the posted green waste gate fee at the Puente Hills landfill, while component four is adjusted by the percentage change in the posted rubbish gate fee also at the Puente Hills landfill. The disposal components, numbers three and four, get adjusted at the same time the gate fees change at that Puente Hills lands landfill, which is why Athens recently informed city staff that they did a rate adjustment last November 1st, 2013, only adjusting the disposal components of the rate, which in this case are the green waste disposal and the rubbish disposal components. That increase bought, brought the single family resident rates from what the council approved at 29.99 to 31.39, which is what residents are currently currently being charged now. At this time, Athens is only proposing to adjust the first two components, collection and transportation and process. To reiterate, since the rubbish and green waste components of the rates were adjusted November 1st due to the closure of the Puente Hill Puente Hills landfill, those components do not presently require an adjustment. Accordingly, upon your consideration and your approval, the rates for single family residences would go from 3139 to 3173, keeping in mind that the rates approved last year on July 1st were 2999, but again were increased in November 1 due to the closure of the Puente Hills landfill. With that, city staff and Ed Chens from Athens are here to answer any questions you may have regarding this item. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from council members? Okay, if there are not, I'll open it for public comments. Anyone the mayor and council members, I do have a concern I would like to share with you. Um, and I apologize bringing this up in the, the meeting, but I have been out on vacation. I didn't see the staff report until earlier today and have a chance to look at some of the numbers. Uh, it, it appears, based on the staff report and from correspondence I've seen, that Athens unilaterally raised the rubbish disposal rate in November. Um, the agreement does make provision for pass-through of certain rubbish disposal fees, although that has to be done in cooperation with the city city doesn't have any authority to disprove the increase unless it objects to the fee. Uh, on your previous city manager and through my office, we did object to the imposition of that fee. Uh, I don't think it was until just a few days ago that staff was informed that Athens went ahead and unilaterally imposed that fee. Now, I'm coming late to this, and I know we have a representative of Athens here, and maybe they can shed some light on that fact. Um, tonight's action doesn't technically 
have anything to do with that rubbish disposal. It only has to do with the, the CPI component. But my concern is that we never resolved our objection to the rubbish disposal component fee. And I wouldn't want your action to approve a CPI rate increase tonight to go forward without everybody being clear the city hasn't removed its issues to the rubbish composal fee. Um, I don't know if you have any questions for the Athens representatives or I know we have a, a, one of our waste representatives in the audience tonight if we need some additional information. But I did want to point that out to council. Eric, I'm not sure I understand what took place. They, they raised fees across the board and we did, weren't aware of it? I, I think the best illustration of this is in Mr. Sahagan's staff report, there are, uh, there's, there are two tables on page three. And if you look at those, those tables, I think I can walk you through what we believe occurred. Okay. You notice under this, and I'm just gonna refer to the single family residential component as an illustration. You see the uh, listing for gross rate, 31.39? Yes. The council's last official action to increase that gross rate was in June of 2013. And at that point, the rate stood at $29.99. So when I reviewed the staff report, I wondered where, where was the council's action to move it to 31.39 there, there is no action I checked with the clerk the city never took that action the city never approved that fee um, so I, I believe Mr. Sahagan received some information from representatives of Athens saying that in November they just unilaterally increased what's com I believe just component four the refuse or rubbish disposal component? Three, three and four. Three and four, the green waste disposal and the rubbish component. That brought our established rate from $29.99 up to $31.19. 31 31.39. 31 31.39, sorry. And now they're asking to apply the CPI to the first two elements, collection and transportation and process. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have any objection to the to the CPI. I think that's pretty clear under the contract. But I but I did want to note for the council that staff did have a dispute over the elements three and four and the amount of that increase and whether or not there was authority to impose that, whether it's a whether it was properly imposed and how it was going to be doing. We made that objection known. So I was surprised to find out that that rate had been increased despite our objections uh, without without resolving that issue. Yes, sir. Question. So when you say it had been increased, so I haven't been paying my trash bill. My wife's been doing that. So I actually don't know what we're paying. Um, so had we since November last year been paying this rate? My understanding is yes. So Athens unilaterally increased the rate to 31.39 in November. And they've been collecting uh, from all our residents without the city's knowledge? Correct. Hmm. How do we resolve that if we chose to not move forward with CPI until we got that resolved? Uh, I, that's a good question. We'll have to research that and discuss that with Athens. We haven't resolved the other remaining issues. <coughs> they did send a letter to the city <coughs> indicating their intent uh, to pass through these fees under components three or four. <coughs> Mr. Sahagan and I talked about that earlier. We couldn't find the exact letter. It was sometime between late <coughs> August and October. Uh, we do recall that the city had a relatively short period of time to respond, we responded with an objection. We hired a consultant to review that and we believed that we had issues with the proposed fee that they were going to impose. With the departure of Mr. Polito, I believe that 
further discussions with Athens got sidelined, so that issue remained unresolved. Should we? We, we will need to resolve it at some point. I think you can go forward with a CPI increase. I don't believe there's any, uh, at least <coughs> unless Mr. Sahagan's going to correct me, the CPI rate is the CPI rate, and it's not being assessed on the two elements that are in, um, in contention. What we would have to do is just make sure we're, we're not waiving any rights and we're reserving our right to challenge components three and four, the green waste disposal fee and the rubbish disposal fee. I have a question for Mr. Chen. If Good evening, Ed. Good evening. I have a question. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I know it affects single family residents for the green waste. If you are a, say for example, uh, Mary owns property on Longden and she has three houses on a lot. Are those considered single family residences and they're each affected or is she not part of that category? Um, I'm not so certain as to that particular um, lot, but it depends on uh, for a lot of the um, whether the, the city's contract um, it enjoys high, one of the highest level of service. So for multiple families that are on a lot, uh, some of those will be individually um, individually affected. Uh, however, if they do share one trash service, say for example, um, in the case of a granny flats or if there's a second unit that's owned by the same, uh, same utility, same electric bill, then it will be just one account and that will, account will be just only affected once. Oh, all right then. Yeah, excuse me, Mary, Mary, Mary if, if you're going to, I'm not sure we should be addressing this question at this point. I think this is a, a, a detail. I know, but, but we're, we're talking about a bigger issue, I think, right now, so. Well, I, I do want that question addressed that, because okay. I need it clear in my mind since it's, you know, part of the staff report and it's not clear to me, but, so I, I, I think I understand what you're saying is if it's a multiple family on a lot, but they share like the, the big trash bin and they don't have to separate their green waste, then they're only, it's one service increase. But if there's three separate houses and they each have their own separate trash containers, then each is addressed individually. Correct, and that would be because of the, um, the the rates component in the Temple City is uh, uh, separated out in four different categories. And tonight, uh, with regards to the service portion, uh, that's the only thing that we're looking at today, and it's the only the service portion which is affected by the consumer price index. Okay, now it's clear for me. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, Mayor, I would like to ask Mr. Chen, just to make sure I'm hearing this correctly, because I just want to um, clear my mind. So since so last year, in uh, I think July 1st, the rate has been 29.99, and then November 1st, 2013, the residents were billed, if you were in a single family, 31.39. Is am I correct? Uh, according to yes, that's correct. So the money has already been collected from the residents, and every month, presumably, with with a 40 cents increase per month. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions at this? Does um, Eric does a dollar forty? Uh, yeah, I'm a dollar forty. I'm sorry. The uh, the percentage of the increase, the one point four two percent, um, that's based on the thirty one thirty nine that we pay a month, I believe. So in other words, that uh, we're, we're the increase is is 1.42% uh, of the 31.39 to bring us up to 31.73. That's I, the way I understand I, it, I don't correct? believe that's actually how okay. it's calculated. All right, so how, do, how do we get from 31.39 to 31.73? Uh, 
I believe if you take a look at that table I was originally referring okay, without to. Even, without looking at the table, maybe somebody can explain to me in, you, in English. I, you, you take component one and component two, okay. and you multiply that by 1.42%, which is the CPI, okay. and then you get the increase for those two elements. But that, And that's all we're discussing tonight. That's, 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 that's all, all that's before that's us. That's all that's on here. The rubbish right. and the green waste components, which you refer to as items three and four, that's right. are not before us at this point. Well, they never and, were. And, okay. Well, I know, but that's an <laughs> argument for another day, it sounds like to me. So perhaps the thing would be to decide if we're going to approve this tonight. And if we do, it sounds to me like you would like us to have some language in there reserving the right to still look into that components three and four or whatever we do tonight doesn't waive our right to do that. Correct. A a a absolutely. Um, and again, I'm not, we're not saying that the CPI is miscalculated. It's just that the tables lay out and kind of memorialize that this fee uh, for the green waste disposal and rub rubbish disposal are here. They're part of the fee. Um, thought it appropriate not to let that just go quietly. Right, so because we don't want to approve it just Correct. because it looks like we're approving it because it's there. Correct. Uh, we certainly would like to a chance to, to look at that yes. further. Yeah, that's right. All right. Okay, are there any other questions from council? Okay, if not, I'll open it for public comments. Anybody from the public here to comment on this? Okay, if not, I will close public comments. Uh, okay. Council comments. Councilmember Sternquist. Um, I would, you know, just ask that we move forward with um, our city attorney looking into resolving that issue. But I don't have an issue with moving forward with the CPI. Okay, Councilmember, you. Well, likewise, I I think the CPI is in the contract. There's really no room for a negotiation there. But I must say I'm a little astonished to hear that the cost has gone up, uh, even though we're in uh, dispute. That actually, I didn't know that that took place. That's, and uh, and thanks to uh, Mr. Jim Basin, it's dollar forty per resident uh, per month, not forty cents. Okay, Councilmember Vascara. Who's it, Eric? Who's going to pursue this? Well, if you'll give direction to your city manager, he'll, he'll select the right team to do that. Do we need, uh, at some point in time, to have a, a uh, closed session for discussion? Uh, we'll certainly look at that. Uh, we might be able to accommodate that. I think that would help me at least clarify the issue. I think uh, really what's transpired, the, sub the request is submitted uh, early. The city responded apparently with some questions and concerns. There's subsequently no additional communication between the parties, and it was then implemented. And so, what we want to do is go back, meet with them, and determine if that rate is justified. If we come up with a different figure, have that discussion with them, and develop a plan from there. It may be fine, but we don't know that. We have some questions about it for sure. Thank you, okay. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I agree with uh, my fellow council members. It, you know, the, the, what we're before us tonight, the uh, CPI increases is, is built into the contract, and uh, certainly uh, that is no surprise. Uh, I am concerned, as I think all of us are, uh, regarding the other issue. Uh, for whatever reason, it looks like a classic example of somebody, well, something falling through the cracks. Um, but we, we we sound like we can still uh, go back and at least look at that. So. Um, for the matter before us, uh, I have no problem. Okay, I, I agree with my uh, fellow council members, so therefore I'll entertain a motion. I, do. I think maybe a okay. lawyer would be better at this. <laughs> I was going to suggest the uh, city, city attorney to help us to, uh -huh. to, to actually formulate that uh, motion. Yeah. I, I have in my notes that um, Council Member Strinquist made a motion and that it was seconded. It was a motion to approve the CPI increase subject to our reservation of rights on the green waste and rubbish disposal rate issue. Pretty well put. It's all second. <laughs> okay. okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Is there any objection? No. 
If not, this item has been approved uh, unanimously. And we will now move to item B, the acceptance of bid and award of public works contracts to All American Asphalt for the Safe <coughs> Routes to Schools project. And I believe Public Safety and Service Manager Sahagan is up again. Yes, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor Blum, Council Members. Before you this evening is item 10B on the agenda, which in which you're asked to consider staff's recommendation to accept the bid and award contract to All American Asphalt for the Safe Routes to School project in the amount not to exceed $858,000. Since on May 6 of this year, staff presented to the City Council the acceptance of plans, specifications, and, and estimates for the SR2S project, in <coughs> which was required to get to the point where we are today, and said staff report and staff presentation went into a fair amount of detail about the procedural nuances about the project. Staff's presentation this evening will be more about what's happened since May 6th and the benefits of the project to the nine school sites that are affected. As mentioned earlier, on May 6th of this year, the City Council accepted the plan specifications and estimates for the SR2S project. On May 21st of this year, City Council approved $1,485,000 for fiscal year 2014 as part of the city's pavement management program. On May 29th of this year, the, the city published a notice inviting bids for the SR2S project. On June 24th of this year, the city clerk conducted a bid opening for the SR2S project, and a total of four bids were received by the city. The bid amounts range from $742,615 to $965,448,000 for base bid items. As noted in the staff reports before you and as shown on the screen behind you, the initial lowest bid was submitted by Los Angeles Engineering Inc. in the amount of $742,615. However, on June 25th, Los Angeles Engineering filed a request, as no noted as attachment B in your staff reports, to the city engineer in order to have their bid withdrawn after they discovered an internal clerical error following the bid opening. Accordingly, and as specified in the city's bid processes, the bid submitted by All American Asphalt became the lowest responsible bid. All American Asphalt has been doing business in Southern California for over 40 years and is one of the better known materials production and construction companies in Southern California. The company has its own asphalt plants located in Westminster, Corona, Irvine, Irwindale, and the San Fernando Valley, along with an aggregate producing facility in Corona. Based on staff's assessment of All American Asphalt, staff deems the company to be a reputable company and their bid in the amount of $858,000 is lowest responsive and responsible bid. The concept behind the Safe Routes to Schools, or SR2S, is to increase the number of children to walk or bicycle to school by funding projects that remove the barriers that currently prevent them from doing so. Those barriers include lack of infrastructure, unsafe infrastructure, lack of programs to promote walking and bicycling through education encouragement programs aimed at children, parents, and the community. 30 years ago, 60% of children living within a two-mile radius of a school walked or bicycled to school. Today, that number has dropped to less than 15%. Roughly 25% commute by school bus and well over 50% are driven to or from school in vehicles. And back then, 5% of children between the ages of 6 and 11 were considered to be overweight or obese. Today, that number has climbed to over 20%. These statistics point to a rise in preventable child diseases, worsening air quality and congestion around schools, and missed opportunities for children to grow into self-reliant, independent adults. 
Safe routes to school programs are intended to reverse these trends by funding projects that improve safety and efforts that promote walking and bicycling within a collaborative community framework. The schools affected that and that will receive physical improvements as part of the SR2S project are Longden Elementary, Oak Avenue Intermediate, Temple City High School, Emperor Elementary, First Lutheran Christian School, La Rosa Elementary, Cloverly Elementary, Clemenson Elementary, and Longley Way Elementary. The project will implement, ver will implement various safety improvements, including construction of sidewalks and curb ramps, speed feedback signs, and other various traffic signage and striping designed to, designed to calm vehicular traffic and increase pedestrian safety. Some of these street improvements slated for the project are also identified in the city's traffic calming master plan and pavement management plan. In consultation with the city's planning and engineering staff, the city's design consultant prepared the bid package for the project, taking into consideration the city's traffic calming master plan and pavement management plan so that the improvements in this project could be done in coordination with identified traffic calming master plan and pavement management plan improvements. This will minimize inconvenience to school sites, residents, and reduce construction duration and costs by getting better economies to scale. Types of improvements to be completed as part of the pavement portion of this plan are slurry seal, asphalt rubber aggregate membrane, which is known as ARAM, from Dale on the portion of Daleview from Fear to Grand, street restriping and street restriping. The PMP area included in these SR2S improvements is roughly 500,000 square feet, which represents about 3.7% of the full pavement management planned square footage area. This excludes Rosemead Boulevard. In conclusion, the fiscal year 2014 budget appropriated $488,900 for the Safe Routes of School project. The city has spent $24,301 for design and other pre-construction activities, and another $10,000 has been allocated for the public education component of the project. The current Safe Routes to School fund amount available for the construction contract is $454,599. Also as part of the fiscal year 2014-15 city budget, the city appropriated $1,485,000 for the city's pavement management plan project. The city plans to use roughly $403,000, $403,501 for the street rehabilitation program of the SR2S project and any funds not used will be transferred back to the PMP project budget. Accordingly, the city council is requested to accept the base bid submitted by All American Asphalt for the project in the amount of $858,000. And with that, uh, City Engineer Ali Kair and myself are here to answer any questions you may have. Okay, are there any questions from uh, council members? I do have a qu question, Mr. Mayor. Um, I mean, it's a lot of material that was presented, but it's not entirely clear to me what the original cost estimate was. Uh, maybe uh, Mr. Kayat can because I see numbers, because um, this clearly exceeds the uh, money from Caltrans, but I also read that there's part of this actually from the pavement management plan, so I'm a little, I need some clarification there. The uh, estimate for the <clears throat> SR2S portion construction cost, cost is $507,000. The additional cost that's uh, for uh, street improvements or rehabilitation is a separate component that's coming from the 1.485 million that's uh, approved for this fiscal year budget. So SR2S is within the approved budget amount, which includes state funds and city matching funds. Then street rehab portion is 100% city funds coming out of 1.485 million. So what was the original cost estimate for the project? Uh, I'm just trying to see how two good we are estimates. in coming up There are two up separate here. cost estimates. Yeah. The original cost estimate for the street, if SR2S is 580, 
and then for the street rehab, for those streets we include in that, per the PMP, the exact right. estimate is $580,000. So, so we, this represent quite a bit of uh, savings, savings over the two combined estimates. Correct. On the rehab portion, or also referred to a payment management program, right now, the exact amount of streets that we're doing under this program are going to be about 20% less than what was estimated in the PMP uh, budget. So the extra funding can apply to f more improvements? Yes, improvements. whatever funding, we're going to just use funding for other street rehabilitation projects. That's good to hear. Thank you. Okay, any other, <coughs> any other questions from council members? Okay, I'll open it for public comments. Jerry. Yeah, don't, don't go too far, Allie. Just have a seat in front there. Good evening, council members, uh, council member. And uh, I just have a question. Looking at this, I, it seems to me that some of these things are new to Temple City or new to me, and I guess I would have liked to maybe seen something on the screen that kind of gives a visual look at what some of these items are. For instance, uh, solar-powered pedestrian actuated lights and crosswalks. I, d I really don't know what that is. Uh, flashing beacon school speed limit signs. Uh, I haven't seen any, but I guess they're around. And uh, crosswalk striping, is it gonna be just the normal striping or is it gonna be something unique that identifies it as a crosswalk, I guess. So uh, speed feedback signs, like what? Uh, is it gonna be radar type of solar power type of thing that shows your speed that you're going on the street or I guess I just have these questions that I haven't seen any of these around Temple City. I think I might have seen them at other cities, but I'm just wondering what they look like. Okay. Thank you. Allie, you want to take a crack at that? Sure. I can answer the questions. Unfortunately, I don't have a visual presentation for those items, but as you pointed out, those items are commonly used in a number of cities to improve the safety and the visibility uh, uh, Let's start uh, with item uh, crosswalk. That's an important aspect. Those are crosswalks with, we call it zebra type or cross hatch striping, and they are done very thick. It's not pain, it's a very thick application. You actually, when you walk over, you even feel the crosswalk. Uh, even the car going over that crosswalk will uh, slightly feel a little bump. So those are very high level uh, visible crosswalks. They're applied uh, with heat application. Uh, it's called thermoplastic, and the term is uh, extrusion <coughs> uh, type of thermoplastic. Uh, the science feedback, speed feedback signs are exactly what you described. Uh, they're solar panels, uh, powered panels, and you'll literally see as you're approaching that sign what your speed is. And it's very commonly used and very effective and cost effective. Uh, approach. Uh, there are also, uh, we're adding striping on some of the streets around schools where you may not have any striping. We're putting center line striping to improve the visibility and lane division uh, uh, in those areas. Uh, on the crosswalks, uh, in payment lively crosswalks, they were actually alternative bid items in the project. They are not in the base bid. Uh, a, those items are not being awarded. Uh, we spoke with Caltrans uh, about that. And they are more uh, maintenance issue, become more maintenance issue later on and become costly and they break down. They prefer actually a different type of application, maybe high-level crosswalks, which we're putting with some high-level warning signs. So those in-light, in-payment lighted crosswalks are not in the base bit, that we're not awarding those. I hope I didn't miss any of the items that you mentioned. 
Okay. And there is one item also, maybe the mention I want to mention this ARAM. That is not, was not included in your payment management program, but it is a very effective and cost efficient way of doing rehab for, uh, with a lot less uh, cost than what we refer to as cold meal and, and, and overlay. Uh, so we're doing that on one street and hopefully it will be a wonderful application. Okay. Are there any other uh, comments from the public? If not, I will close public comments. Carl says, Mr. Mayor, there's one. Excuse me. Come on, come on, for, come on forward to the microphone. G give us your name. Uh, I'm Marga Buter. I'm the librarian at Temple City High School. So I'm very happy to see this, and then I'm happy to be here tonight to see that it's going to be in effect. And I was just wondering when the we might expect, because um, I know I expect the street part portion um, to take some time, but you know when we might see some of the signage. Um, Our goal is to finish the majority of the work before the schools reopen end of August. There are going to be some components of the project, mostly uh, some of the speed, feedback, science. It will take some lead time. But we will do the infrastructure for those underground conduits and necessary foundations. But the goal is to finish the pavement, uh, striping, crosswalks, as well as some of the regular signs that, are, that can be purchased with that long uh, lead items before the end of August. That's the goal. Okay. Okay. Is there any other public comments? If not, I will close public comments. Uh, council comments. Uh, council Member Vascara. No comment. Council Member Yu. Um, I just want to have a request, and um, perhaps, you know, uh, I, you know, Mr. Uh, Jim Basin asked a question. It's hard to see them and without some visual, and perhaps the. Um, uh, the city engineer and or the city manager can bring back perhaps in the future some option time some visual just for a quick brief report to help us understand what uh, all we're talking about with the safe route to school so that's my comment okay just a question um, you know the square yellow patches it looks like a Lego that are on the corners are, are is that part of the safe route to schools you mean the, the, the handicap? This, um, that's ADA. The, the yellow the thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you mean with the little dots, raised Those dots? Are ADA. So like Those are handic yes, handicap Those ramps. Are okay. We are putting some ramps as part of this project. We are putting actually sidewalks, a lot of sidewalks, improving sidewalks too. And as part of that, there are ramps. We're going to put those yellow uh, metal. Uh, uh, those are for blind people. Yeah, too, those right? are blind tactile people. services. Yeah. Yes. And they That's require they whenever the pedestrian yeah. uh, might run into um, traffic. Yeah. They are required by, by law. The reason I ask is um, my mailman came up the street yesterday and he wasn't aware or hasn't been familiar with them yet. So he fell and tripped and he said, please just bring it to the city's attention that it, for me who, you know, I said, I, I'm sure it's ADA requirement is something that we need to do and he said well i want you to know that i haven't been the first person that has told me that they have tripped on the raised square so i went out to see it and, and indeed it looks like a lego if you ha you know where it's Correct. raised up so i mean i don't know how you you know you're darned if you do and you're darned if you don't but was that bill the man that was bill and he was <laughs> bruised yeah we are actually required to put them in. It is a standard. We have no choice on that. Right. Yeah. Is there, maybe it's just going to take some getting used to for? They've been around for the, many years. They've been around Not forever. disabled? Really? I, yes. Yeah. Maybe it, I've just it, never it, walked it, there. But he's, <laughs> he thought that they were, because they've been working on that intersection. That, that intersection may be new, but that, I think that product's been around for a long yeah. For many years. Well, it's on, I believe it's, either Woodruff or Garibaldi. Is that new on Las Tunis? Uh, but we're also doing a CDBG project with some, some ramps. I'm not sure well, if that's I'll part let, of I'll the location. I think that's what it is. is I'll it? let okay. him know just to be okay. more careful. Yeah. Okay. If I may, I can help answer that question. Actually, though tactile service has been required as a vi for visually impaired people to detect the um, 
vehicle traffic whenever they leave a safe area into the vehicle traffic area. However, it's been tied up in, in, the, in the courts, uh, so to speak, in the, the court had not been enforcing that. Uh, it's really a struggle between the wheelchair uh, disabled versus the visually um, you know, uh, impaired. It's, it's about, uh, about four or five years ago, the court had ruled that we have to put those in, even though uh, a lot of us do find it, you know, problematic walking on them, and but and that's the requirement. And it doesn't work well for wheelchairs. And then they become the maintenance issue because they do, you know, come off and other things. But but that's the that's the law right now. Okay. Any other comments? No. Uh, I guess one comment I have is, you know, when we started with this SR Safe Routes to Schools, it, it was a single component. And uh, you know we approached uh, the, the staff and city engineer and said, you know, we've got the pavement management going, we've got the uh, the traffic calming issues going, and we could be setting ourselves up here where we do this project, and six months later we come back in the same area and do this project, and then six months later we come back and do the other one. So I I commend you for bringing all of those together and saying we're going to work these areas once. And we're going to do it all, and because of that, I think there's a cost saving. So not only do we save some money in the process, but uh, we reduce the amount of inconvenience and and get both the pavement, or all three pavement management, traffic calming, and safe routes to schools implemented on a much uh, faster basis. And that's part of what we've been trying to do. So I, I appreciate that. Okay, with that, if there are no other comments, I will entertain a motion. I presume I would make a motion that we accept a bid and award public works contract to All-American Asphalt in the amount not to exceed $858,000. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Are there any objections? If there are no ob objections, it's unanimously approved. Um, do we actually need to actually the Part B, the authorized city manager, to uh, execute? Do we need to do that? Amended? If it wasn't included in the motion, you said. Oh, because I think you amended that from the original yeah. report. Then. Yeah. Okay, so I'll. Yeah, so I'll add to the uh, motion that. Uh, Just I don't see that in the recommendation. What are you talking about, Vince? Uh, it's. Um, to it is to authorize city manager to execute a contract with All American Asphalt. Mm -hmm. It's in the, the end uh, of the recommendation section from the staff report. Okay. It's oh, staff. okay. It's not in okay. my agenda, so uh, I'll, I'll amend my motion to include that as well. Okay. Second that. Second that. Okay. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. It's unanimously carried. Uh, we will now go to item 11 on the agenda. It's communications. There is none. Uh, item 12 is an update from the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the city council. Uh, a few announcements. As you know, the summer concerts are underway, and tomorrow night uh, we'll celebrate the 4th of July a few days early with the Wartime Radio Review and their throwback World War II USO show. Uh, come early for hot dogs and view entries for our second annual patriotic picnic contest. Uh, <coughs> The following Wednesday, July 9th, the summer concert series continues Vegas style with Fat Cat Swingers, <coughs> Booming Toms, and Roaring Horn Lines. Vocals crooner Douglas Rogiers will be performing. Both concerts are at Temple City Park beginning at 7 p.m. and of course admission is free. Uh, we have some rabies clinics uh, planned. The city's rabies clinic is set for next Friday from 6 30 to 8.30 p.m. at Temple City Park. Take advantage of this once a year event for dog licensing, vaccinations, and microchipping. The rabies vaccinations will be administered for $5 per pet and microchipping at a resident rate of 15. For more information, call 626-285-2171. I just wondered though if they mean next Friday, July 4th. <laughs> I suspect that's not the case. So it's the following Friday, that would be the 12th, right? No. Yes, July 11th. 11th, July 11th. So a little correction there, it's July 11th. Uh, the rabies clinic will be uh, being held at the park. How often do dogs have to get 
previous shifts? Two. Twice? Every two years? Every two years? Is that right, Kathy? Every two years? Does anybody know? All right. We think it's every two years. We'll take a vote. It's our best guess now. Okay. Okay, you may want to, we have up on the board there, you may want to, since 4th of July is coming up and we have different and new rules and regulations for this coming 4th of July, you may want to review that or have. Sure, well, Robert, you want to come on up and then I'll start off and as you know, the 4th of July uh, is rapidly approaching and we have a whole new set of rules that apply to uh, the use of these fireworks um, and the time is much more limited and they're subject to significant fines. So Robert, maybe you could quickly review those time limits, remind everybody that uh, what times uh, people are allowed to discharge the legal fireworks, the ones sold here. Yes, yes sir. Um, this is the first year and the, uh, the flyers behind you um, have, been are, have been distributed at all city websites. They were actually, uh, um, Flyers were passed out during the concert at the park this past Wednesday, and there are posters and or banners of this that were disseminated to the individual fireworks stands that, um, and two ads were taken out in the paper to let residents know, uh, aside from the message boards that have been put out on Las Tunas, this is a fairly big change for Temple City residents. Um, Temple City residents have been used to, in the past, to being able to discharge for a total of six days. They now will only, they now will only be able to discharge on 4th of July from the hours of 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, and those that are in violation of doing so may be um, li uh, liable for a minimum fine of $1,000, although that does uh, apply more to the illegal fireworks that seem to rattle houses throughout the city. But it also can apply for the illegal discharge of any fireworks uh, outside the established times of July 4th from 12 noon to 10 p.m. Okay. All right. Uh, again, let me, let me just reiterate, as you're aware, there's, there's always been an issue in the city of too many fireworks and there's also an issue of we, we want to allow safe and sane fireworks so that the compromise that was reached is that uh, you can discharge safe and sane fireworks from noon on the 4th of July till 10 p.m. and not outside of that time frame. Illegal fireworks are not allowed uh, and there's a thousand dollar fine and uh, last year I believe there were 16 or 18 people that paid $1,000 for discharging illegal fireworks in town. So just a, a fair warning to everybody. We do want to celebrate 4th of July here. We do want to do safe and sane fireworks, but we want to keep it under control. We've had lots of complaints of too many things going off for too long of a time. So that's our, our compromise and we encourage everybody to uh, to, to join in the celebration, but let's do it responsibly, and we think this is a responsible way of doing it. If I may add, uh, Mayor, uh, deployment levels for that evening will be quadrupled. Uh, for Thank the you, uh, deployment levels by the Sheriff's Department for that evening will be quadrupled. Okay. So typically so, there so are- So your chances of getting caught- Are very good. If you're paying $1,000, yeah. it it's increased, sub yeah, yeah. increased substantially. They've been going yeah. off for two weeks. Yeah. Really? Yeah, we received a letter today. I was trying to find it from the uh, new fire chief captain in town and indicating that they were also going to be having uh, patrols out and about now. Are they coordinating that with the sheriff or with the city, or is that just something they're doing on their own? And are they going to be looking to cite anybody? I would think the answer to that is probably no. But have you... We have, and we did receive the letter, and we did make contact. Um, they will be patrolling the areas um, that are within this district. Um, it seems like most of the time they get stuck in El Monte and South El Monte, but they'll try to make it into Temple City as much as possible. So when he refers to the patrols, that includes what area? That includes all the areas that are within Area 7. Um, it, 
that be that used to belong to Chief Duvali, which includes Duarte, Monrovia, um, as far east as Glendora, and as far north as us. That would seem to be a very large area. It doesn't sound like it's going to have much of an impact in the city of Temple City. Is that correct? It depends on how long they're here, and I think the the sheriff's deputies riding around in patrol cars would have a a bigger effect than uh, than firemen in trucks. Well, it's nice to know they're taking an interest. Of course, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go to item 13 on the agenda. This is council reports regarding ad hoc or standing committee meetings. Uh, I'm aware of one meeting that took place was the Rosemead Boulevard Improvement Standing Committee. You want to uh, address that, Vince? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. We have uh, a Rosemead Boulevard Improvement Standing Meeting. It's no longer meeting every week. Uh, it's on a as needed basis. We're basically talking about all the unfinished work. Um, and some minor improvements and also closing out the, the, the project, so to speak, so. Yeah, we have one more meeting. We think we'll have one more meeting until we can wrap this up completely. But, but uh, it's, as we talked with, with other things, this is with the fireworks where we need to get used to the new regulations. Uh, we realize on Rosemead Boulevard, we're still working to help people adjust to the, uh, the, new, uh, you know, the, the new layout that we have and how it works and everything else. So there's still some issues of helping people get educated on uh, especially the bike lanes. Uh, that you don't park in bike lanes, you don't put your trash cans in bike lanes, you don't do a number of things that bike lanes are bike lanes and they're intended for that. So I would encourage anybody that's involved in along Rosemead, just be aware of that. Have we had any more trees or signs go down since last week? No. Luckily not. I, I think in our meeting there, there are some issues with the landscaping. We had uh, landscape uh, personnel there. They're looking at some issues that we still need some answers on, but uh, we suspect that that was vandalism. But, but to answer your question, uh, Council Member Vascara, we actually gonna, they may be painting some of the curbs um, with reflective paint so to improve uh, visibility and also get people more used to the idea of having curbs there. It, it, it's obviously an issue because I know that there are people hitting it. They're, they're mm -hmm. not doing it on purpose. Yeah. They're blowing tires and stuff like that. So whatever we can do. Okay. I noticed uh, coming home on Friday there were still some Athens bins in the bike lane. Uh, I would imagine that's on an individual basis, I guess. I know that you've talked to them and they've confirmed that they are going to not be putting them in the bike lane, but there were at least two of them in the, in the bike lanes on the, as I was going south on Rosemead Boulevard approaching La, uh, Las Tunas last Friday. Um, that, is uh, that is correct, sir. It, it's, it's not so much Athens at this point. It's the individual business owners. Um, These look like they were in residential areas. So they're commercial bins? Yeah, they were commercial bins. I don't know if they're, do any of the, maybe the, the apartments, apartments or... The condominium units. Those? Yeah, the condominium yeah, units. It didn't look like they were in front of any commercial units. I'll, I'll take a look at it and I Somebody's can have... putting them out there. I know, I'm not saying it's Athens, yeah, but yeah. I guess we just need to do a better job of uh, getting them... We do have, them. we do have Orvin, uh, uh, this daily overnight parking control staff and staff will direct um, that yeah, parking only control be on Fridays staff. For some reason. I don't know. Well obviously that's the pickup day probably for that Right, area. yeah. We can deploy uh, staff out there to ensure that there's nothing out there and there, if there is to um, go up to whoever it is that's there and have them move it inside as soon as possible. Yeah. Since we have Ed here, you know, obviously, you know, maybe your, your drivers and that just be cognizant when they put the cans back to make sure that they're not you know, putting them out in the bike lanes and in other things. So it's, I think it's an education, uh, you know, your drivers, uh, you know, I know we're, we're talking about the uh, sweeping of the bike lanes, so there's still some adjustments we need to do and we need to keep working with you and your staff to make sure that we get that ironed out and getting it running smoothly. Absolutely, Mayor. Okay. Okay, uh, item 14 on the agenda. Yeah, uh, Mayor Bloom, before you oh, move on, I, I, I'm not sure if this belongs here, but I, I guess, City Attorney can 
tell me whether or not I should do it now or later, but um, Director Burroughs reminded me that I've been a little remiss in reporting out on our youth committee. Uh, those of you know that we do have a youth committee in town, although they are not necessarily bound by the same rules and regulations of our other commissions. They do meet once a month, and, uh, and I know they've come in the past and reported out. Uh, the reason I bring it up now is they've, our youth committee has just completed their fourth year of existence, and uh, I'll have to say that I was very pleased this year with uh, the members of this year's committee. They, they were very um, motivated and, and, uh, and anxious to, to represent the youth of our community and brought forth a lot of good ideas participating in the Rosemead uh, uh, go, go uh, right. ceremony. Yeah. And, uh, and so we, uh, moving on, of course, we will be selecting a new committee uh, this month. Uh, we'll, we have taken applications and we'll be doing some interviews for that. We have a lot of the members who will be hoping to return as well. Uh, a couple of things that they hope to look uh, forward to in the new year would be um, they want to host a um, and Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong, it's called uh, Youth Engagement uh, Conference, so to speak, uh, trying to get other youth uh, to come here and have a uh, kind of a, a one-day con or one-evening conference, get some guest speakers and, and just topics that may be important to the youth. So they're, they're going to start working on that. Um, they're also going to assist in a, a new youth feature for the Connect Magazine for the fall. So they'll be working on that over the summer and helping uh, Wendy Chung with that. <coughs> and um, so there's a lot of, uh, you know, for a while there it was sort of stagnant, but I think uh, uh, with the youth, we actually had uh, uh, members of the community at our last meeting, which kind of was exciting. We actually hold the um, meetings here. They're the fourth Thursday of, of every month. And of course, the public is welcome as well as uh, council. And uh, they, they do sit up here and they, they get a chance to, to really, uh, act like a, uh, a committee, a commission, and, and I think they appreciate that. And so they take it seriously, and, and I look forward to continuing working with them. And they have been uh, attending our commission meetings, and what they do every month is report out as to what all the commissions are doing um, and the business that they've been conducting throughout the month to let the rest of the members know. So they, each, they assign a member to each commission, and they attend those meetings and come back with a report. and then. I usually re, re, uh, provide the report regarding the actions of the council, and, and then we discuss those and anything else that comes up. It's run pretty much like a regular meeting. They have an agenda, and they, and they uh, get a chance to, to make uh, some good decisions or at least uh, uh, talk about what they would like to see uh, regarding the youth in the future. So what I'd like to do, one of the things I'd like to do next year, hopefully, is to get them more engaged with the council, perhaps coming to more council meetings and talking about the things that they're doing rather than having me report out and then that way they get the opportunity to present those to the council and, and take any questions or any feedback that we might offer to them. So. Can I make a suggestion that maybe we invite the um, youth commissioners to our commissioner barbecue in, That's a good idea. in summer? That's a great idea. I think, uh, what do you think, Kath? Although they, the problem with that is they is we really don't have a committee right now. Oh, okay. okay they, they're oh, yeah, done for the summer. Yeah. We, we try to coincide it with the school year for obvious oh, okay. reasons. Um, we may have them selected, though, before then. And if, if so, I think that would be a great idea. Yeah. I don't think they'll eat too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mayor, if I may, I just have one question regarding um, the Los Tunis Downtown Revitalization Standing Committee. Have they met and where are we with that because I have a lot of questions from residents asking are we moving forward well we it may may answer that um, uh, Councilmember Viscar and I are on the committee uh, we met uh, and we reported some time ago and right now the critical piece on that is the to do the traffic study because I think we heard from everyone from the full council that would like to have a study session to discuss that project but right now, a lot of that is contingent on a full traffic studies. And I think we're getting very close to finishing. We personally have not had met since last we reported because we're still waiting for the traffic report to come It's been back. about three months since we met. Right. Some time. Yeah. 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 So do we know how much longer on the traffic study? I believe it should be the latter part of August. Uh, we should have the study done and then 
we'll convene the committee and then bring it have a study session with the whole council because that'll have some very important information that you'll need as you go further into the decision making process and proceeding with that project. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like before we, we leave the item on the youth committee, I, I want to thank uh, Mayor Pro Tem Chavez has really taken the lead working with the youth and as we, we talked about with the Citizens Academy, we talked about how do we how do we bring that down a notch to start working with the youth and I think that's one of the vehicles we've used so I think we're doing quite well in reaching out as we've uh, wanted to. Mr. Mayor, actually I actually have a question for uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, are you guys taking uh, applications right now since you're going to be or forming a committee? you'll be for a new youth no, committee. They, 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 the application uh, period is over. They actually uh -huh. begin in May I see. before they leave school, and we get that information to all the schools, of course. Mm -hmm. And and uh, Kathy, how many we get? Eleven applications, I think, this year. Or, do you remember? Um, we're, we're interviewing seven members. Uh, Can they repeat? Uh, well, they're limited to a two-year um, term. Term, and. Um, we just um, started that. So, um, yeah, if, if you know of anybody, of course, uh, it, it's, it's always in May, though, usually. Because yeah, okay. then we, we kind of, like I said, we coordinate with the, with the school year, pretty much. So. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's go to item 14 on the agenda. Council item separate from the city manager's regular agenda. Council member Sternquist. Um, just a question regarding the um, sign review. I know I spoke to um, our interim city manager, but we haven't had a chance to meet to to go over and see. But I was just maybe the whole council would like to know where we are and with the if that's with uh, Mr. Sahagan and the code enforcement. I don't know if they're working on that. You talking about the, the, What's the, the sign the ordinance? Sign? You mean the, the new sign ordinance? Yes. Um, I'm not sure, Jeff. Do you know where the status of that is? I mean, we started that a couple years ago, and we've haven't moved forward with that. Now, um, I want to say about uh, three weeks ago, uh, staff finished its review of the draft uh, for the whole new sign code, and then um, our consultants are making those changes now. Um, one of the things we asked for, and so it's taking a little time, we wanted a lot more examples, more pictures, more graphics uh, to make it even easier to read for the public. So it's taking a little more time than it normally would because they're actually having to put together exhibits for it. So we'll have something possibly to look at by? I'm, I'm hoping that it's done in about two weeks. Um, it would go to Planning Commission uh, uh, first, uh, and they would review it, and then we'd bring it to Council. What signs are we talking about? Sign ordinance. The sign ordinance. The ordinance, the ordinance itself. Business. Yeah. OK. And, and this will actually, uh, this ordinance will end up combining so we have one sign ordinance for Right now we have two, one for the downtown specific plan and one for the rest of the city. This will combine it all into one, uh, one ordinance. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that we had this before yes. the um, Camellia Square gets built and then we're yeah. different and, and, all over. And, and we have their, their draft sign program and we actually reviewed it for both the existing sign ordinance and the draft uh, sign ordinance that staff reviewed. Okay. And, um, I was able to attend as council member, you was the Chinese elected officials um, installation dinner in San Gabriel and um, Polly Lowe, the past president, did a great job and um, she's a dear friend and, and she invited me to attend. And I just wanna share that um, I had the luxury of sitting with some really great citizens who don't lit, or they're not residents of Temple City but their children attend school in Temple City, some are in the San Gabriel County area, um, and they were so complimentary of our city and how um, inclusive our city has been in reaching out to the Asian population, whether it's through the school district or our community meetings, and they so much want to move to Temple City if they can find a home. But it seems like as soon as the house comes up for sale, it's gone. But I have to tell you, I was very, very heartened by a gentleman who um, shared with me that his elderly parents live in an apartment in Temple City. And he really feels that our senior lunch program has really enabled them to leave their house, at least for a small part of the day, to go out 
and to socialize and he just wanted me to tell the council how much he appreciates the um, Parks and Rec staff in all of the effort that they put into that lunch program. It's so much more than they just show up for lunch, but daily they do activities. Um, it's so inclusive and they said it's so much fun. Like they're singing Chinese songs and um, the Chinese people that are attending are singing Yankee Doodle Dandy and that it's just really a great opportunity for everybody to get together. I know Janice is very, you know, involved but um, I don't know so they um, he just wanted me to thank you for us going and reaching out and also shared that um, the word on the street is that Temple City's lunch the actual menu is one of the best that's in the San Gabriel Valley and that we have a dual lunch is really really um, a great uh, how old do you have to be, Kathy? You qualify. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just want to thank you and thank Roman and the staff for making that such a, you know, just a great experience daily. And they go far beyond than more just, you know, showing up for lunch. So thank you very much for, for your efforts with that program. Who's the new president of the uh, group? Um, Vincent, what is, is it Chin, what? the new president? For, the, the ch for yes. what? The Chinese, Chinese the Polly Lo. I thought she, no, she. She stepped down. No, I thought, well. Ed. Say it oh, again. One, not a, oh, it's her second yeah. term. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and she did a great job the first time around. But and she, I was, and she likes it. That, and she the, really likes that's it. That's the reward so. you get. Yeah, yeah, so. It was nice. And I didn't um, eat too much chili paste this time. And it's an inside joke. <laughs> Sorry, I was at the Anything Dodger else? game that night. That's yeah. Okay, Council Member, Vis Council Member Viscara. I have nothing to do with you. Okay, okay. Council Member, you. Nothing to add. Thank you. Nothing. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, just a couple of quick things. Um, first of all, I just want to let everyone know that I was fortunate to attend the CERT training a couple of weeks ago, uh, put on by Brian Arizumi and his staff, and I want to again congratulate them on a great job. I I learned a great deal uh, over the weekend. Uh, it was a long weekend, but. Uh, uh, it was a lot of information, and I, I feel that I'm hopefully better prepared to to help myself, my family, and the community of, in the event of a disaster. And, uh, it was a lot of great information, and uh, and the staff uh, kept everything moving uh, very well. And uh, it, even though it was uh, every day, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it seemed to go by very quick. Very diverse group. Um, we had. Uh, uh, teenagers from a high school's age all the way up to uh, senior citizens. I include myself in that group, of course. Uh, but uh, uh, Matthew Lynn, principal of La Rosa, was in attendance. Um, we had staff members in attendance. And so it was a very good group. And, uh, and I think they all appreciated it uh, very much. And, uh, and we learned a lot. We had the opportunity to uh, go and use the uh, funeral home as our disaster. Uh, <laughs> I had never been in that funeral home before, and that was quite an experience. Was that uh, for a fire? Uh, well, it actually was a, an earthquake. Uh, okay. An earthquake had occurred, and uh, I'm sure I wouldn't want to be in there during an earthquake, but uh, uh, it was an interesting building, to say the least, and obviously it's going to be uh, torn down soon, so it was a good opportunity to, to walk around inside there and, and check it out. But uh, they did a good job, and uh, I, I want to thank them again, and, and it's a good program. I know Brian wants to... Uh, uh, do it more frequently. So anybody who hasn't had the opportunity, I would certainly recommend uh, you take this training. It's, I think, the goal of the city to to have most, if not all, people here in the city to have some type of training, and that uh, certainly will be a benefit to our city, I believe. Uh, second thing, I just want to ask uh, uh, Mr. Sahagan, does the street sweeping begun? Because uh, I know it was supposed to start today, correct? Or no? This, the city. city I, my, I moved my wife's car this morning, to, just in case. City staff is issuing. Um, if you did, yeah, courtesy notices. But, but they didn't actually sweep, though, did they? They did not actually sweep. No. Okay. No. So we're issuing notices not to not to be there. The notice yeah. indicates that, as a courtesy, you right now you are parked in an area with, that will be deemed. Due to street sweeping, I can't remember the verbiage. Well, when is the street sweeping actually going to begin? August 1. Oh, August 1. August okay. 1. There was okay. some uh, 
there was some nuances we had to work out with Athens, and uh, okay. I was informed that August 1 right, was the best time. We want to make sure that we get people tuned to that. So anybody, for example, who was parked out there today would have gotten a notice that you shouldn't be parked. We, issue, uh, we issued about 400 notices today. Okay. All right. And okay. Uh, we got a lot of good feedback from residents, letting them know that they appreciated it. Right. Um, because they just didn't know. And that was the biggest thing moving forward. And I think you had mentioned it once before, and maybe it would be helpful for those people listening out there. There are some streets that have quite a few more signs than other streets. And I think, Correct. I think you indicated that's because of some streets that they have a cul-de-sac coming out, they have to have a sign in front of that cul-de-sac. And so, for example, where I live, where Persimmon is, there are a lot of cul-de-sacs, and there it seems like there's just 100 signs out there. Of course, there isn't. but. The other streets I noticed have maybe one at the beginning and one at the end, not as many. Is, right. Is that the, the, it's every egress into that street. Okay. So if you're coming out of a cul-de-sac, whenever you make that turning radius, whether it's right or left, mm -hmm. you have to be um, It would be left, right? Yeah. Um, you I have to be have able. Like five cul-de-sacs on right. that one You section. have to be able to see that sign. Okay. In most streets, it's at, the, it's at the beginning of the block and then at the end of the block. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, great. That clears it up. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, yeah, just the broader issue of the street sweeping, obviously that's dealing with the, the clean, clean water issues. So we're not doing it just for the heck of it. I mean, uh, we're focusing on ocean clean water and the river clean water stuff, and uh, it's all part of that issue. Okay, I have uh, two items. One, uh, I attended the county sanitation district board meeting, uh, as I do every month. And uh, as we've said before, they, they offer these boat trips to, uh, to uh, take a closer look at our ocean monitoring, their ocean monitoring and research program. Uh, as you know, all of our sewers go through treatment uh, plants and uh, the material, the, the water that does not get recycled gets uh, shipped out into the ocean and it goes out a fair amount. Anyhow, they have boat trips and it, it's open if anyone would like to go to them. Uh, two of them have gone by. We have July 12th, July 26th, August 9th, and August 23rd, uh, plus, a th and those are all on Saturdays, plus a Thursday, August 21st. I've left each council member here that schedule. So if anyone would like to take that trip, it's from 8 in the morning till noon. It goes out of the, uh, I believe, Long Beach Harbor. And uh, so if anyone is interested. San Pedro. Or San Pedro, excuse me. So if anyone would like to let me know, and we can schedule, they can accommodate about 30 people per trip. So uh, anyone would like to do that. Yeah, I've, I've taken two of them, and they're actually very, very informative. And you go about two miles out. So it's, if, you're, if you're prone to seasickness, no uh, <laughs> you may want to take some. Yeah, ap but it, it's after they stopped the boat. Yeah, it's, it is an interesting. Yeah, thing. I went once, and then it was pretty rocky once they turned off the Yeah, some, well, some days more than engine. others. But you do get a nice view of a Pelsbury's uh, Peninsula. And, that was uh, fun. It is a lot of fun. Yeah. Very informative. Yeah, the other item I have is uh, Janice Helmer uh, sent me an email today indicating that uh, Louis Polenta, uh, Louis the World War II veteran oh. that uh, shows up at the, uh, the Blue Star Banner yeah. program, he, he shows up in his uniform and he still fits into his World War II uniform. And he's been one of our, our senior citizens of the year. Apparently, he's quite ill. He's on life support at this point. So if you get a chance to, uh, to say a prayer for, uh, for Louis, uh, I'm sure he and his family would appreciate it. OK. Uh, Can I make a comment real quick? Yes. I, th I heard some popping when I was out there. And there's some kids throwing those poppers in the park. I guess they didn't read the, get the literature. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are safe and sane. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, but yeah, it's, but not, it's, it's, not outside the, it's yeah. outside the, the period. Okay, item 15 is reimbursement of expenses to city officials for conduct of city business and for city payment of conference expenditures. Those are listed on the agenda. Item 16 is a recess to the successor agency to the Temple City Community Redevelopment Agency. And could we have a roll call, please? Agency member Sternquist. Present. Agency member Vascara? Here. Agency member Yu? Here. Vice Chair Chavez? Here. Chairman Bloom? Here. I'd like to uh, move to item three, the consent <coughs> calendar. Uh, we can approve 
There's two items on the consent calendar. Motion to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any, any opposition? Okay, if there's no opposition, the consent calendar is unanimously approved. Uh, there is item four, unfinished business. There is none. F five, new business. There is none. Communication six. There is none. Public comments. Any public comments on issues pertaining to the successor agency? Seeing no uh, public comments, we will close the public comment period. Update from the executive director and agency council. There is none. Matters from agency members, there is none. We have no closed session and we are adjourned and we will reconvene as the full council. Item 17, actions taken by the city as successor agency to the Temple City Redevelopment Agency. We approve the consent calendar. Uh, item 18, additional public comments on items not listed on the agenda. Anyone care to address the council? Okay, seeing no one, we will close the public comment period. Uh, we will now go into closed session. We have a couple items on uh, closed session. One's anticipated litigation, the other's conference for labor negotiator. And uh, we will be there a while, so if you're interested in staying here, you'll be here a while. <laughs> That's pretty ambiguous. <laughs> Eric, what's you going to take for you? Did you get my voice mail the other day? There's two things I want to go to. One's the 90th anniversary of the uh, Humane Society. I know. So we'll go to that. That's in August. The, oh no, it's not. It's in July, I think. Okay. And I don't know if you want to go, but I think this year, my last year, I'm going to go on the boat trip. Does it appeal? Well, have you made contact? She's staying on the boat, right? When they go in every day? No, she's not on the boat. <laughs> she's in a hotel. Not on the Galapagos. Yes. People can't go on there. Yes, in a, it's a national, what do you call it? National park. 98% of it now is a national park, so you get registered and you feel good. Well, why do you think people could go on to the app and stay there? They could visit it. No, she stayed overnight. It's Hotel Del Sol. She's gorgeous. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Test, test, test. Nothing at all?
<laughs> okay, all right, me too. Like, I, I came last July and everything was fine. And, you know, the invoices are printed ready to go. You know, they're going out in July. So, um, yeah. um, so Compass Blue Boy Senior Discount. Um,
not be under parks. It's under the LA County Parks and Recreation Department, what I was saying. That's the wrong department to have under. Because they're not, well, how, where else would you put it? You'd have to ask. It's really, it's the supervisors, how they're informed about things. So they need to be able to shut people out. So that's, it's in the politics, you know, it's like in the hearing. So these 
I get I to go home. I mean, I, no, we're not I done. Didn't mean to get so comfortable. No, they're not done. Oh, you're not done. I'm I'm leaving because of uh, oh, conflict, conflict of interest. So I get to go home, and I didn't say no. They probably won't be down much longer. Thanks for staying, Robert. You want me to stay? I mean, you want to go? I can stay. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I'm tired. It's been a long day. You know, typically you guys are not even over by now. That's true. It's still, still, a little, still a little early. I don't think they're going to be that long in there, to be honest with you. No. All right. What else we got? That. Okay, you guys have a good evening. Be, be safe driving home. Oh yeah, you too. Hey, so we're not doing anything for um, for um, Jeff. Jeff. Not that I'm aware. Is there anything else? Well, there is nothing else. There is. I'll try to come by. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, we'll talk to them about again, because they sort of, uh, when I came in, I was in the house, I was back there, and then, from I don't know. This is, this year is just to make them feel better. I know, but, but see, they don't, they're, yeah, they're not trying to make them feel better. Where'd you go? Oh, I was talking to Sarah. Oh, hello? Oh, yeah. That's How did they, we were, oh, they turned out to be nothing.
I swear, this happens all the time. I see it all the time. I said, so what did you do here? He goes, oh, I got here about 10. And he goes, what did you do here? He goes, oh, I work. I got jobs. I work at Coles. He said, I work at Coles? Coles. I go, how the fuck do you work? He goes, yeah, I went to Coles since the most time. I went to the gym, I had to do graduate, I had to do the gym. How? How does that happen? He goes, it happens everywhere. I go, I want to do it, man. They're all legal. All my friends are legal. If you have the right, as soon as you get here, so we were in the house of the And then I go, well, how do you get out of here? I just took out the dishes. I go, how do you do it? They go, oh, check. My, 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 my little cousin, my little cousin's girlfriend went to elementary. She got here. She went to elementary. Um, How's that work? High I school. She graduated from CSUN, and now she can't get a job. And I'm like, you know, why can't you get a job? I don't have a social security number. <laughs> Is that amazing? Is that crazy? I, I was talking to the guy in the car, I'm like, look, I'm not gonna take it, but you educate me here. How is it that you do that? He goes, I like it. I go, yeah. As soon as I got it, they never get it. I go, dude, you must be like a jerk for my thing. When people are jerking into that shit, they'll fucking take out of the prayer. I'll look at you, but they'll fucking kill you. And I go, hey, can you speak English? And they're like, what? Here, I go, I go, you're in the right. You got to speak Spanish, you have to Spanish. You have to. If you don't speak Spanish, you go to court. I remember one of my buddies went to court. He said, the guy decided that he needs to speak English. I ignore it. And they're like, I'm saying, well, do you need my time? He's like, well, yeah. Or it's my class. He's like, well, I can sign it. He's in the court right here. He goes, like, do you speak English? Do you need to sign it? He's like, no, I'm not going to do it. Well, you speak no English. So he can drop it. Drop the keys. Then they get driver's license, they don't speak English. They go, how do, how do you know when to stop? <laughs> how does this danger dead end stop? So. Sorry, false open. She can't, yeah, she, can't, she can't get a job because she has no social. But she graduated. But she graduated. She graduated. From, I went to her graduation. That is. She turned the. Huh?
Hey, now man, it's hard. Now none it's of hard. these USB ports are working, huh? There's no power to switch. Right? They're not connected anymore. Huh? They're not connected anymore. Why'd they get disconnected? Do you remember? I think where Peter was waiting. I think that's Peter's thing. Peter's thing? Yeah. I just want to be able to charge my, what you call it? I thought they were working. But anyways, uh, yeah, there's so much. And then you go down there, when it, back then, I, I, you could go down there, and it's like the revolution. It's like this yeah, really cool. Was cool. It was cool. Like, you had a lot of stuff. San Diego was sweet in there. It was cool on Friday. It was like, I was, I was, I was facing a punishment for three and a half years. It was so cool. I mean, That's what I was every weekend. I mean, when I didn't come home. Can and it was just like a boxer sweet. dinner. It's like, what? Yeah. Dreamy, come here now. San Diego State, dude. You can oh, see buses. it. Buses. They have buses. Remember yeah. buses? They said all these buses you stopped. See. Like they have the socks and the barrel for 
It got so bad. I'm sure it's built over. I 
the
look, Bobby, I'm telling you right now. And I'm like, what's up, John? The Note 4 is coming out in September. Is that this one? No, that's, that's the, 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 this is the S4. The S5 just came out. You have the Note 3, right? Two. That's the Note 2 right now, but yeah. Oh, that's right now the Note, the Note 3 is out. He's like, look, dude, the Note 4 is going to blow everything out of the water because Samsung knows that they're going to have to compete with the new iPhone that's coming out. So he's like, wait for the Note 4. Your upgrade is in August, and the Note 4 is going to come out like in mid August or September, along with, so you'll have the iPhone, everything. He's like, don't do anything. I'm like, Johnny, dude, you're my. You're my constant ability. I ain't doing anything, bro. Oh, that's a good one. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be happy with that. I know you're dead. John has a smooth deal. John is awesome. I want that one during uh, Christmas. I got a little gift card. He's like, Bobby, you, Bobby, you have to be like, oh, look, Johnny, you hook me up. I got to hook you up. And he's like, oh, okay. And then half the time, I, I tell him shit, but he doesn't even realize that because like, I'm messing around with him. Uh, I go, dude, you hook me up with a pair of jumper cables, Johnny. And he's like, I have jumped people in the car. You can jump people out of my house. Oh, he's that one. I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, no, dude, you're missing all my jokes. I go, Johnny, you're like tearing me down. You're missing all my jokes. He's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, no, dude, don't be sorry. Want an elevator and you fart? Then be sorry. And he just sits there and he looks at me. Like, no. There's a guy like that. He, he, just, uh, dude, he screws up all my jokes. There's a guy like that. He takes his things literally. Yeah, he takes his things literally. But his employees get a kick out of it, or the guys that are walking around, because they hear there's a couple of Latinos in there, yeah. and they hear me like messing with Johnny. Well, Johnny, I'm gonna have to go through with Johnny. Johnny's annoying. Hey, I need to get a 25%. Yeah. <laughs> if you hook me up, he hooked me up. That's crazy. good. But I'm not like that. Like, I, I used to have the what's the other phone that everybody likes? The business phone. Not the iPhone. The, uh, like that. No. Everybody used to have like Blackberry. Blackberry. Yeah. Oh. Except Blackberry. My Blackberry. Like when it first came out. Yeah, when it first came out. Yeah. And they and everybody's like, oh, you want the iPhone? I'm like, no, I like the Blackberry. Like, cool. And then all of a sudden, Blackberry just went away. Yeah, they're gone. Remember the? I guess the leader of the market. Uh, yeah, it was Blackberry. It was the Nokia. 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 Remember the flips? Dude, yeah. everybody, their mother had that little Motorola, tiny one. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I was reading an article and uh, they're no longer. They're struggling. They're not making no innovation. No, not really. Oh, my God, this shit, man. <laughs> dude, this fucking dude has the heaviest up. And he asked the stupidest questions. Like, there'll be like a, a shoot, like, not a shoot, like a, a fight. Gangsters fighting, and they left the location, right? And he'll say, like, all the updates we get is all the updates we get. Yeah, yeah. Like, no one's going to bring out, like, all the new ones. It's what it is, right? So he's like, well, he has a heavy accent. He goes, wow, what did they run to? <laughs> I don't know where they ran to. They just told me they fucking run southbound. <laughs> they really have an eye on it. <laughs> just a heavy accent, like I, like fucking nobody there. Like who? Who? Who said you're the one who's complaining? Yeah. It's like uh, no weapons seen. Well, did he hit him then? <laughs> like dude, like the stupidest shit, right? Like, he doesn't know how funny he is. Yeah, like he he, he thinks these know. questions are real good. Yeah. Like you don't ask him shit like that. You just say, hey, where are they running to? All right, yeah. hey, can I get you to go look for them? Everybody stops and he's like, Oh, you know the radio. Oh, you know the radio. Let's talk. Like 50 Davids are are dispatched to the whole 50 Davids. Are you sure you hit him? (laughs) Dude, that's the call, dude. Like, you gotta go and go check it out. Dude, he's funny, dude. That's the way Johnny. And then, you know, every now and then, the funniest is he'll talk when you do these big words. Like, apparently. Yeah. Like, like, he'll go, like, Well, apparently. Oh, shit, man. He used apparently. Around, like, 
reality show. And he's like, oh, you watch reality shows? Like, see what I mean? Yeah, he listens, yeah, he listens the entire thing. But dude, if you, if you ever get transferred or fired, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come look for you. I live up here with Baldy. I'm like, that's not what I'm talking about. He just doesn't get it. You know, like, he takes yeah. it really, really, really little. Yeah. That's funny. He works for the city. He was in the Magnum and Western Huh? Anything ever go wrong, you bring back. I'm like, dude, I ain't going in. I'm going so, back. Have you heard any of the secrets that are coming out? iOS 8 is, um, they've kind of geared it towards like the photographers, like the ones that took on like big pictures. Really? The iOS 8? Big pictures and videos and everything. Yeah, really? Is screen going for more, more specific now? Or? Six, they say the screen's going to be a little bigger and still not standard. Or this well, is they said this, this is, is a five. Well, the reason why, you know, Josh said that they'll never get bigger than him is that if you, if you have to use a phone with two hands, because that's not the no. concept. The concept is to have a bigger screen. But I want the bigger screen. I'll let you go back to the iPhone. This is a five. I'll let you go back to the five. That's it. I think the, I think, I think the, the, I think the note is like a 5.7. Do you use a bigger screen for your life? It tends to be like an iPhone that's smaller. Yeah, I hold that. Great job.
first uh, four G Android phone that came out for uh, Swims, the Evo, I got that for about a year. And once the battery just like dropped out completely, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go back to Apple. Really? I, I, I like I like open source, but at some point, like I don't have time to follow up and just make sure that like um, yeah, just, I, don't, I, I didn't have the time to keep up with that. At some point, my phone just kept glitching. I'm like, I just I need to like. I need the restriction for my own good. Yeah, for your own good. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a little bit. There's a little bit all the time. You, you gotta know it. About once every two days, I have to reboot. I have to restart my phone. I just have to. Alright, it's starting to glitch on me. I download a lot of stuff. I download a lot of stuff. Because I don't have to pay for it. I still have my, my, my iPod is I have about six thousand dollars worth of music right, that I've accumulated over years since uh, the since the first iPod. Is that and I have about six thousand bucks worth of music. Is that that name from the Apple iPod? I'm just never releasing iPod. into it, you're doing like an art, like a ATV racing game, or like you do enough flips in the actual game, you're like, okay, I'm like really? spinning around. Yeah. My you know, you know, you know the movies, you ever go to the movies and they show about it, like, they do some shit there. Really? And you first hear like, alright, and then you kind of forget about it after a while. But I don't know, it's just like, I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's just crazy. I mean, I'm pretty sure you're going to see it. It's the first one. It's not the first one. They're starting to come out with it where you don't need glasses, right? They're getting to that point. Yeah. Right now they have it where the glasses aren't battery powered. Because most glasses... Yeah, the way on my TV is battery. Um, my glasses aren't battery powered. Because the first ones that came out, they, the glasses were battery, battery powered. Power. And then, like, LG was the pioneer with uh, the ones that weren't. And then they, that's the trend, the trend now. And now they're trying to do it to where you need it. You yeah. just have to be, like... Right in front. Right in front of it. Thank you.
cancel these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> snowboarding thing where you literally like you see like the, like the powder actually it's just like it's, really? it's amazing like, my first question was well It's more of a graphics based order now, now that I actually. I just know that I love all, everything that comes with it, right? Because, like, I have my Amazon Prime where I can, like, stream movies. I do that through my PS4. Um, you do that through Netflix. Netflix. My Netflix. Can you do that through a PS3 too? It is a computer. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I have. And then I can buy all my movies through the PlayStation Store, right? And I can get them in HD, which I know I couldn't get them on PS3 in HD. Can you? I don't remember. I'm not sure. I know what Xbox is doing, but I'm not sure. I know, yeah, I, I know that I can get it that way on my PS. I do. I like it. And, but lately, I was like, I, I, my, I saw my son playing the new MLB 14. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what, dude? Let me try it out. So I gave him the worst game. complicated. He's like, I just downloaded it. I asked you if I could buy it. I'm like, what? So it's on there? Like, dude, it's crazy. Dude. I, yep. I tried to, I tried to play yeah. it. 
They're gonna take. They're, they're gonna take like GameStop out of business. No. Now GameStop's fighting. Oh, GameStop's fighting. Oh. Yeah, the GameStop. That's why they're like, if you guys want us to continue to sell your stuff, you're not gonna make every game available online at least until like after a certain amount of time. Oh really? They they fought. They fought long and hard about this. Yeah, I was wondering about that because then you'd be kicking stores out of business. But that's the same thing that happened with um, the record shooting. your system right. happened. Yeah. And then um, I don't know who to thank, but who one of the higher ups was like, okay, we, we, we jumped the gun on that one, sorry. And then just the first time you buy it, you'll have to, first time you connect it, you do need to connect to the internet. But after that, you're good. Oh, you, you don't have to. Yeah, they changed it. They, they backtracked really fast on that. But you can see the writing on the wall. They're not going to have any more GameStop. They're not going to have any videos or anything. It, it's a it's, it's, uh, It took this thing almost till the end of the meeting to load for this for this meeting. Load what? Load load the agenda for tonight. I think you just need to reboot that thing. It's probably crashing. Huh? Have you updated the system lately? Are you also iOS? Should I bring it to you? Have you ever updated the OS? Yeah. I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay. What is that? We need a, we need a operating system. system. The operating system. Yeah, I, mean, I think he said it's the old one. Yeah, he hasn't updated it. All. And then plus your uh, your thing is mm -hmm. old anyway. The chip is getting worn out. You want to just take it with you, and, and I'll pick it up tomorrow? Go ahead. I'll do that there. You know you have to be secured away from the 210. You want to take it? You want to take it? Yeah, I'll do it. I was going to use that to take notes. I didn't. Sir? Uh, I'll probably stop. You can just take it away. Yeah. We'll lock it. Okay. Okay, we're reporting back from closed session.
We have a report, please. Thank you, Mayor. The City Council met in closed session with regard to the two items uh, indicated on the agenda, item 19, one matter of anticipated litigation and one of conference with labor negotiator. It met with the legal counsel and labor negotiator on those items. There was no other reportable action. That concludes my report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, there he is? Yeah. Th thank you. Uh, it's still July 1 and we are adjourned. It's still July 1. Yeah. 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 By a few minutes. Barely. No. Still want to talk to me? Huh? I'm still talking to you. Still want to talk to me? Oh, you want to talk to me?